And this road is known as Brookside, which goes along here. And then we have a still very famous Brookside Close, but probably made more famous again because they've now put the first episodes up on STV Player. It goes from when it started in November 1982 now through to the summer of 1984 to date. Today is Halloween in 2023. And now Brookside Close is just ordinary people's houses. And so you're kind of aware of that every time you film. So let's just have a little tour of the close on this GoPro here. Um, so starting with numbers one to four, you will have already seen these houses, but they were never used for characters. They were always used for production staff. Um, there was a canteen, the editing of the show went on in these houses. So basically the houses that you saw occupied in the show went from number five to number 10. And to work that out, I think number five has this van parked in it now. And uh, I can give a sort of running sort of commentary on her and roughly the history of who was in it. So starting with your classics that are now available on STV Player. Um, this is the detached home of the original Grants family with, um, with the dad being played by Ricky Tomlinson. He wasn't um, shirking work like, um, like he was in the royal family as Jim Royal. It was kind of an opposite version of his character, but very working class. And um, as we went into the 90s, this became the main home eventually of, uh, of Mick Johnson and his family. And then, um, after that, so Sinbad lived there. The last family to be in this house was the Gordons in 2002, um, where the dad was trying to give up smoking and all that sort of thing, if you remember that. This bungalow um, was in the 90s, the home of um, um, Bing Crosby and Jean. It was briefly home to... Um, the trio of, um, of main female younger characters, Casey Rogers, Jackie Dixon, and Rachel Jordash. And then Ron Dixon joined in, living with Bing as, as a roomie. Then it became the main home of the Shadwicks. Um, and there was a lot of tragedy, what with uh, Greg being killed off in the explosion of the, um, the Millennium Club. Um, and, then, and then the Hiltons, that were um, sort of the grandparents, weren't they? And it was actually burnt down in 2002 and had to be rebuilt. So they would have literally done that, um, actually destroyed it and rebuilt it. So this is probably one of the newest ones in a sense because it was rebuilt a lot in, in 2002 to 2003. And originally, the oh so famous um, crotchety old neighbor, Harry Cross was in here as well during the 80s. And Alan Partridge was the first to occupy it, number six. So these two are detached, number five and six. Same with number seven. This was the mainstay of the Farnham's family. And I should have written down who was here in the 80s. I think the, um, I think that was uh, that middle class family, the Collins might have been here, I'm not sure, uh, because they got a detached place. Um, they'd moved from the Wirral, as you can see there. You can see them on STV player right now. The Farnham's, first, uh, his first wife, Patricia, then Susanna, he got back together with Susanna again. That, that took this house all the way through the 90s. Then after that, it actually swapped around where Ron Dixon was in that one. He actually moved in towards the end run of the show um, in, in 2002 or, or so, I think it was. They swapped over. This one, number eight, which is still detached, was really the main house of the Dixons because it was um, throughout most of the 90s. Then you had the O'Leary family. You had the Irish Musgroves, if you remember that, and then the Dixons moved back. Ron actually had a flat above a shop in Brookside Parade, um, mid-90s or so, or sort of 97, that sort of thing. He moved back in around the millennium and then swapped around. So yeah, they got detached houses, which is good for working class people, especially these days. It really is um, something that hardly anyone can seem to be able to afford. And, and this was a new build estate, um, the only soap at the time to actually feature real houses. And how they actually did it was is that you didn't see some of the walls because it was filled with cables and camera equipment. So it's kind of similar how they how would do the uh, Coronation Street houses. So these two were the only semi-detached houses on the close. This is number nine, was where Heather and Roger Huntington, um, if you watch the originals from STV Player were. And then you had Terry Sullivan, the Harrisons going a bit further into 1990. You had Eddie Banks and Rosie Banks and the Banks family. That One of the main stories I remember was Rosie's gambling addiction, losing their lottery winnings, the feud with David Crosby over there in the bungalow when um, 
when, because they didn't put the money in for the ticket and it was supposed to be a shared syndicate and Eddie just remained stubborn, that storyline. Then there was a really famous storyline when the Simpsons, when they eventually moved out because the house was repossessed and the Simpsons family, as Ron joked, oh, who's, who's Bart, are you Homer, are you Bart? Moved in and you got uh, one of the most famous controversial storylines that Brookside ever did in number nine. You've got the incest storyline between um, to the brother and sister in the Simpsons family that tore that family apart and after them um, living next to the Dixons it became home to um, Lindsay Corkill for a very short period in 99 after, the, after it actually bought off the Simpsons but then from 2000 until the cancellation of the show in 2003 it was the home to the Murrays and there was another really big storyline here in um, in Nine Brookside Close which is the one you see to the right which is Anthony uh, the young son Anthony getting bullied as he did get bullied um, by um, by by a girl and and he sort of accidentally murdered her and that's what happened so I'm just sort of pointing away a little bit towards here while someone comes out of number 10 that isn't Jimmy Corkill so and so that was a huge storyline in the history of Nine Brookside Close. So, um, the, there was also a teenage pregnancy storyline as well. I'm actually up to watching 2002 in my run of watching the show. So you'll notice here, there used to be a phone box that is gone. And also, you can kind of see in the panels of this fence here that, um, that it isn't even. There's one, there's one in the centre of it, and that one is, um, is where the path to Brookside Parade was. Only, as any Brookside fan's going to know, um, it doesn't actually or never did actually lead to the Brookside Parade of shops and a petrol station and a nightclub through there because that was in a separate studio. I think it's somewhere near Allerton, sort of five or six miles away in that direction is where it was. So the, that was not there. Um, and, and so it was simply a path that leads to nowhere. Now, of course, with the houses, with all this now being turned into an ordinary uh, close, it has been completely sealed off. But that middle panel there is a kind of legacy of it, as you can see because yeah because you can actually see that uh, if they built the fence normally they wouldn't have that short little bit there would they it just wouldn't so getting on to the last house of the actual close which is another very famous part of it is 10 brookside close which is i think most people are going to remember it as the home to the um the cork hills but you had the taylors originally petra taylor quite a um, a, a tragic storyline as well where where her um, husband died in his sleep or something the, um, the Jacksons following that which were her relatives Terry who is um, somebody now who's left who, after he left the show he actually got done for being the getaway driver in um, in some sort of I think it was a murder situation or something so Terry Sullivan and Michelle Jones that's um, his girlfriend came to live there. That's going to come up shortly-ish on his TV players run of episodes. They're up to they're now up just out over episode 200 to date on Halloween 2023. The Corkills then moved in in 1985 with uh, with Billy Corkill and that 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 famous scene of where he was going mad with his struggles with unemployment. And he drove all around these grass gardens here. Came from him in this house here. So that was the original um, Corkill lineup, if you like. Bill and Tracy and all that um, and then um, before the Cork Hills got it back again after they left um, in 1993 it was the home of the Jordashes they were put there as um, part of the witness protection program but her abusive um, husband Trevor Jordash tracked down Mandy and um, she sort of accepted him back and they had an uh, abusive relationship and um, she resorted to as you know um, her and her daughter stabbing him and for over a year the body remained hidden in the back garden of this and so that's probably it's probably the most famous storyline actually that I've mentioned in all of it is um, is that so that happened between 1993 and 1995 she she got together with Sinbad and Sinbad was in on it and they, they tried to escape to Ireland if you remember that and um, then the body was discovered so after um, after the Jordashes left and Rachel Jordash became the main character that really stayed a long time in the soap through the rest of the 90s into the into the into the millennium and early noughties after that. Um, and so so this this house then went back to the Corkills and you had a, quite a long run with Jackie and Jimmy Corkill. You had his um, he was he was making money off his drug dealing um, at, at the time and all that. And you had the um, 
you know, the absolute flare-ups between him and Jackie over that, and then he became a reformed character, but he did, he forged some education certificates, so, um, to make it look like he had a degree, which he didn't, but he became a teacher, and then Jackie rumbled him in, in, in revenge for something, thinking he was having an affair or something like that, and then he went on a downward spiral more towards the millennium, where he, uh, where he sort of, you know, mental health was a big, his mental health and his struggle with it was a big part of Jimmy Corkill's story there. And so we had all this happen. By the end of um, sort of the, the millennium and the noughties and all that sort of thing, it was uh, Jackie Corkill had left and it was, it was where uh, Tin Ed lived and Emily and, um, and some of the Shadwick family were, were all roomies in this house. So a lot of history there. So there you go, it's, it, I can't really describe it on video, but when you come to this place, you don't really feel like you're in Brookside Close as much as you see it on TV, I don't know. It sort of feels a bit smaller, and the atmosphere is different. Um, it's like it has gone back to being an ordinary place again. So geographically, if you want to find it, I can describe it. You come um, through West Derby, and then you go down sort of Mill Lane, Daysbrook Lane, um, and you come down um, a road that sort of leads past a, quite a wooded area and off it is a road called Brookside It's actually called that and then Brookside which leads from here it leads into Brookside Close and the postcode is L120 BA Which is quite fitting So there you go, that's um, That's a sort of GoPro tour of Brookside Close and Just a little bit of the history as well twice houses here have been on fire so you've got the they've got this bungalow has been destroyed bev deliberately set fire to the dixon's house so for realism they actually did partly gut these places as well and um and, and to make them into ordinary houses again they had to reconstruct walls that had been you know where camera equipment was uh, but not only that after the series was cancelled brookside closed in 2003 um, this fell into sort of disrepair throughout a lot, most of the noughties. Sort of, um, you know, grass was growing up and it was all overgrown. Um, but at some point, and I think it was during the tens, they redeveloped it um, and sold everywhere, all of these just as ordinary houses. And it means that really the, the show couldn't, couldn't come back in the same form. Somewhere else would have to be built if, if there was ever to be any hope of an actual return of something resembling what Brookside was because of that so there you go so let's just have one last look around um, on GoPro sort of let's just sort of walk along as if we we're going back to yeah there's a lot of shared gardens here there weren't any um any fences between the gardens which is customary no divides there between nine and ten it's just like one piece of lawn that's how it always was in the show as well it was just just that um, loads of disputes over parking in front of it and uh, you can see it's quite tight now you definitely would see what everyone else was getting up to living here and then over here yeah the actual the houses that were not actually they were just ambient houses because they weren't part of it and then around the corner here there's another house that I presume was not actually part of it. So maybe the last part of this tour now is, um, is just to remember what was here before the end. There used to be a gatehouse so that you couldn't just walk on here. And of course during the, uh, I think that was still up, but during the time where it was kind of abandoned, um, going into the noughties, it was still here but possible to come in. But now you can just drive in and then you go all the way down here. Um, you um you could get this far in the 90s when it was being made what did happen apparently is that phil redmond still used parts of it and some of those houses for stuff to do with hollyoaks and a couple of things were filmed and this house i don't think was ever used so it might have this may, may maybe this was an ordinary house the whole time and just quickly if we go try to run i think that's pretty obvious it's halloween um we'll just go to the to where they would have filmed, sometimes filmed the entrance to Brookside along here. So just a dead ordinary suburban estate. All this was just normal in the 90s and the 80s and so on. Through here. 
the gatehouse with security was the only thing that would have made it seem a bit different. You notice here that they used places, streets close by like this for some on location scenes as well. Um, and I occasionally you do you did see that on air. This name Brookside is a giveaway that this is the road that will lead to Brookside Close, simply called Brookside. A few scenes like when Jimmy Corkill was off his head on drugs and ragging along the road and crash into Frank Rogers were filmed in quite nearby roads not far from here so so that's it that's the one take Brookside tour yeah what I did what I did leave off was that you can actually see the remnants of the gatehouse still in 2023 so as we come along here you wouldn't see, there's something you wouldn't see in an ordinary suburban estate is that so you'd have been stopped here by security and I guess people just broke through when it was still up after the show had finished at times and then if you'd have got through this is how far you would have had to have come down to get into the actual Brookside Close so I'll sort of do it so that's still not on Brookside Close this house here then you sort of come round now you're sort of there people used to rag in and out of this close didn't they Definitely wouldn't have respected a 20 miles an hour limit in 2023 if that had been brought in. <laughs> so when you get here, this is really where the, the TV show starts. Probably from... So I'm not sure what the status of this house was then in that case, because it would have been basically on the set, but you never saw anything filmed in there. It was always these houses. We just sweep where it actually was. It was that, and then through to well get it to the right that so those use for production a couple more things to say is that is that you can see from early scenes in the 80s that that through here was just an open field but now it's quite close to other suburban houses so it was like this area was being developed for new housing estates just as brookside close itself was a representation of the sort of new housing that was being built in, in the 1980s with people moving in gradually and that's what Phil Redmond actually wanted he wanted to have a few of the houses unoccupied as the show began and then show new characters gradually arriving because that was how these sorts of new build estates tended to get populated and as it's on TV it probably became far more of a community than it does in real life where most people keep themselves themselves and know their next door neighbours as sort of acquaintances there's only one house that's really joined on and it's that one the rest could have actually been a lot more private than they really were as a result 